Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm here with another Dragalia video. Today I'm going to be looking over the Human Mercury, Child Ranzel, for that are coming with the Dragalia Remix. Uh, forgive me if I'm a little bit tired. I woke up a little bit early to go get vaccinated and I'm also kind of... I'm, I'm fine, it's just that my, my I can't move my right arm very much, so I'm a little bit tired right now. Um, but either way, I wanted to give, I wanted to make a video on this, and that's what I'm doing. So let's get started. First up, we've got Human Mercury. So, the waterworn Mercury takes human form to learn more of a human culture. Though her looks have changed, her mission as a guardian dragon has not. She will show no quarter to those who threaten the peace of those she cares about. Her skill 1 is Raging Ocean, deals damage to enemies directly ahead, inflicts frostbite, and raises the dragon gauge. If the attack connects, the user has a team strength amp. A more powerful version of this skill will be used. Interesting. Damage 540 times 3 hits, skill energy required 2800, special effects frostbite, dragon energy gained 40, and after skill change, um, damage 600 over 4 hits. Skill energy required 2,800. Skill and energy required shared skill 9,940. Special effects, frostbite, last 21 seconds, triggers every 2.9 seconds, and damages 41. And you get 50 dragon energy from that. So, pretty good. Um, this is basically Gala Mim's uh, skill 1. This is what it reminds me the most, including down to the fact that it's shareable. Uh, this makes perfect sense. I really like that she has basically constant access to frostbite and a way to constantly get her uh dragon gauge up the other thing i like is that they've kind of it's really a shame because they really need to go back and fix some units that don't have anything to do with strength amp um because she is kind of built for um the new nihility post nihility world where strength amp is something that's kind of being used it's kind of being used here in a very interesting way we've seen specific units that just give strength amp but this is i think the first i've seen where the ability gets stronger when they're under a strength amp so that's very interesting all right second move aquatic ruin deals damage to enemies directly ahead and grants the user a strength amp if the user has already shapeshift at least once, a more powerful version of this skill will be used. Wow. Okay, that's cool. Damage 322 over 6 hits. Um, skill energy required 8,000. And then after skill change, it's 322 over, with 9 hits. Still 8,000. And strength amp is increased max level 2, which is different from the ones that are max level... Could have sworn Miriam has one that's level 3 and so does the Prince. And I thought Gala Ellie had it too. Maybe I'm misremembering. Um, I kind of like the second effect. Again, I really do like these. I'm a personal fan of the shapeshift units. I love Gala Mim. I love human mids. So I'm kind of liking how she's built right now. Uh, Co-op ability, critical rate 10% because of course she is a dagger unit. So she gets that. Um, chain co-op ability, water team strength amp equals burn resistance 100%. If a team member is attuned to water, it reduces their susceptibility to burning by 100% when they have a strength amp? That's crazy. That's kind of nuts. It's going to be very hard currently, because she, if she's the only unit on the team giving a strength amp, um, then it's possible for, you know, in the beginning she'll have a strength amp, but not everyone else. Um, but if you have a full team of users giving strength amp, that's going to be kind of crazy to have 100% burn resistance to everyone. I don't know. That's really good. I think it's pretty good and makes them for some interesting team building, I think, in my mind. We'll see how it is in actual use when the ability comes out. Water Worms Nature 2. Reduces susceptibility to bog by 100% and adds 14% to the modifier applied to damage when in dragon form. When shapeshifting, the first time the user will transform into her mercury regardless of what dragon they are equipped with. The second time onwards, you will transform into high mercury instead. So they kind of made her literally like Alamim. It seems like the free-to-play versions of the human um, dragons, they don't go uh, to their second form. They stay in their first form because that's what human mids does. He doesn't go into his uh, high um, Midgar Soma form. He stays in his regular form. Um, 
which I think is pretty fair. It looks like she's kind of the in-between of always going to be in every banner. Um, oh, let me finish what she does real quick. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so it's also 100% susceptibility to bog is really good. And stun resist is 100%, so she has basically... She has the potential to be completely resistance to three. That's crazy. It's crazy to me. Um, bubble Shield 2 grants the user the Spear of Protection effect. When they have a Team Strength amp, Spear Protection gradually recovers the user's HP and grants a 1U shield that nullifies damage up to 30% of the user's maximum HP. The shield can stack with ordinary shield. Spear Protection will not stack. This effects are lost upon taking damage or if the user is no longer has a Team Strength amp and after Spear Protection has been lost. This ability will not activate again for 10 seconds. Uh, I really like this ability too. It also seems it's protected by Nihility because it has a very specific name along with what it does. At least I sure hope that's how it works. Um, pretty good. Not too crazy good because a lot of the specific fights for water have moves that you can avoid. So if you get the shield at the wrong time then I guess you don't get the healing. But at the same time, like, give it 10 seconds and you'll get it again. As long as you have the, again, Strength Amp. So assuming your team has kind of been going with Strength Amp. This would kind of be a good, like, unit to put alongside with Ellie then, I would think. Hmm. Hmm. That's my current thought process going through. So what do I think about her? I'm, we're going to have to see how her damage is in Dragon Form. Because that's kind of what was, what made Galamim Galamim and what made Human Mid so damn good is the Dragon Form. If her dragon form is as good, I could see her totally being the midpoint between as good as Galamim or as good as human mids. Like, I think she'll probably be slightly better than human mid and not as good as Galamim. If she's better than Galamim, that's freaking crazy. <laughs> that is insane, especially for a free unit. So I'm I'm obviously going to be pulling. It didn't matter. Actually, it doesn't matter what she did. I was going to pull regardless. So that's cool. Now let's move on to the other unit that's also on this banner, Child Ranzel, who is an axe unit, fire. Swing for the fences is a shareable, deals damage to enemies directly ahead, and inflicts scourged. Uh, 3,300 and... wait, 3,230 skill energy required, 8,559 when it is shareable, effects scourged, last 21 seconds, triggers every 2.9 seconds, damage 41.6. Grand Slam grants the user a strength amp and immediately readies a swing for the fences skill for use. The next time the swing for the fences skill is used, it will deal with critical damage. This crit damage will reset if the user's inspiration level of the user is inspired. Wait. Critical hit will reset the user's inspiration level if the user is Okay, okay, I see what it's saying. Um, defense 15%. Increases defense. Flame team strength amp will strength 8%. Power Hitter 2 adds 40% to the modifier applied to critical damage, but prevents the user's critical rate from being increased by more than 10%. This effect does not affect critical hit, dealt due to being inspired. Also grants the user a strength amp with a maximum team amp level of 2. When the swing for the fences skill deals critical damage after activating this ability will not activate again for one second. Okay. Stun resist is 100% and strength amp equals attack rate up 8%. Okay. Um... Hmm, I think he's pretty interesting. I think it's telling that they put a cap limit on this of 10% because this second move it sounds like to me just always grants him a critical hit, which is kind of crazy, uh, especially for how much damage the skill 1 does, which is 1000. Um, I could see him being, I could see him potentially doing a lot of damage with the right builds. I'm gonna have to wait and see for this one. Um, Obviously, my mind is 100% focused on Herman Mercury, but I'm going to have to see how he kind of acts as well. He also has a Fire Strength Amp, so I could see him being good for when Fire eventually gets Curse and Nihility. Not to say that he'll automatically be like the end all be all, which seems to be just like, oh, he has a Strength Amp. That's better than what subunits have. <laughs> so, he's mainly an attack unit, and it seems like his attack stuff seems pretty nice to me. Um... And finally, the last unit on here is Galaxy. Galaxy is pretty good. I think I have trouble playing her by myself. 
I don't think I've never been able to play Galaxy very good. Um, I don't think she needs a buff or anything. I do think she's really damn good though, obviously. Uh, the only bummer is that she has a dagger unit, so who I have. So for me personally, if I see her, it's gonna be pure rage for me, if I'm being honest. But yeah, that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. Again, apologies for being a little bit chill, but <laughs> I'm tired. So, till next time, everyone. You guys have a good night, and I'll see you guys in the next adventure. Goodbye.